So now let's return to this idea of channels. Now we've already talked about channels and we know a little bit about them already. However, we need to cover a bit of subtlety that we haven't discussed before so that you can be prepared for troubleshooting. There are two kinds of channel. The first kind is called a message channel. And the second kind is called a QMI channel. And we've already covered QMI, so if this is a strange uh, term for you, then go back and just look at the video there. That should be pretty clear. And the second thing we have to keep in mind is we have something called a direction. And the direction, there are two kinds, there are two directions. The, one, the first one is unidirectional. And the second kind is, second direction, is called bidirectional. And this should be pretty clear for anyone who's coming in from an analyst notebook background because you know in these ERM systems that you have two entities very often, they or more, and they are connected across links. And that really matters because the link direction makes a huge difference. If you've got a terrorist here and you've got a terrorist here, you're trying to model their behavior, you need to know who called who, and that is explained or modeled through the direction of the link. So the, again, th this is sort of uh, analogous to the Q world. So you can have a Q here and a Q here. And, a, and again, we've explained this as being a channel connecting the two together. Now, the way this works is that a message is, a message channel is unidirectional. And likewise, a QMI channel is bidirectional. So let's see how this let's see how this works. If you have on the left here, we have a queue manager, and remember uh, these are s sort of considered servers in the QMI world, but we'll come back to that. So you have a queue you have a queue manager on the left, and you have a queue manager on the right. The way that you connect these two together is via a messaging channel. So we're going to connect these together. But remember, these are uni unidirectional channels, which means that if you are connecting the two, you need to explicitly tell the system which direction they're going. So this might be, say, in, and this might be out. And this is the idea behind a message channel. And for more details about a message channel, you can come here and see message channel MQI channels. We're going to cover MQI in just a second. Notice the way this works. Uh, it, you have, in fact, we, we didn't quite draw it this way, but uh, the MQ Q manager is here, and then it's on the right. We did draw that. What we didn't draw was the MCA, and the MCA is what's called the message channel agent, and it connects the two together. So you don't actually directly connect M, the QM or the, the Q manager right? A to B. You, in fact, connect it over the MCA. Okay, so what does that look like? Well, it's actually fairly straightforward. It's essentially exactly what we did draw, except we need to add an MCA here. And of course, there's a corresponding MCA over here. And again, like we had said before, there's still going to be this connection here. And let's call it A, for example, like they did in their diagram. And this is B. This would be uh, connection B. Now, the thing that to keep in mind here is that when you create these connections, you have to do it in two locations. And what do I mean by that? Well, here's the first location, and here's the second location. So you, you are literally, when you create these, you're going to define the connection as A, so that you're going to set the name to A, or someone will have set the name to A. And this one will also have been set, and that will be set to A. And if they're both set to A, then you have essentially created the actual channel called A. That is, communication will flow across these, flow across A. Now, if you don't do that, if you make a mistake and, you know, you call one A and you call A A or something, then this is not going to work. The connection won't work. So you, that is important. So in order for A to be created, you have to have the name set here. You have to have the name set here. And you have to have something called the type set as well. And the types have to be compatible with each other. Then separately, you're going to have a connection B, just like this. 
and it's set up exactly the same way, of course, except that here you're going to have a B. You're going to define the name as B, you're going to define the name as B here. So that's two different locations you've set that up. And of course, you're going to have a type here and you're going to have a type here. They also have to be compatible just like before. And because of this kind of repetition, so you're sort of doing it, you're setting it up once here, you're setting it up uh, and then you're set, you're, and then you're actually setting it up is sort of again here and then you're, you're doing it again here on three and you're doing it again on four in order to get bi-directional transfers to work like this via messaging uh, channels this is referred to as a pair and this is uh, typical because you have essentially two sort of pairs in order to get a that's one and b that's two to work you need to set them up as these sort of pairs now, this is the environment where we're talking about message channels, but what we haven't covered yet is QMI. Now, we have talked about QMI uh, before, but when you set up a QMI channel, your environment changes. These are no longer queue managers. Now, what we have is our application here and our second application here, and remember, we have our middleware here. And, of course, in our case, this is going to be MQ. And if you remember from the presentation on QMI, what's actually happening here is that you have a new thing here. This is called an endpoint. And in fact, that is using what's called QMI. And QMI is one of the APIs. If this is sort of uh, new to you, just uh, go to the video on QMI that to help explain that. But remember here that messaging is unidirectional message channels. QMI is bi-directional. So in the world of QMI, once you set this up, it's bi-directional. Now again, you still need to set it up in two different locations. So you, you still set it up here, and then you set it up here, which creates, again, it creates a pair, a single pair, not two pairs. And then separately, when you refer to this connection, uh, you refer to it because this is, remember, this is the client side and this is the server side, the message queue is considered a server. You, when you set it up, this is called the CLNT con, client connection, and this is called the SVR con, or the server connection. So if you turn to the MQ primer, page 53, you can see an example of this. So what we had been showing previously as A would be, say, a client written in the C programming language. That's this over here. And notice what the application, the C application is doing. It's setting the MQ server. This is an environment variable. You don't have to worry about that for right now, but it is indeed an environment variable. And what it's doing is, the client is doing is it's setting up a connection using Chan1. Chan1 is the name, this all-important name we've been talking about, of the channel to be used for communication between the client and the server. And there must be a corresponding server con channel of this name that is defined on the server. And when, what that means is that is something you do administratively. An administrator, an administrator sets up the server con. But, you're, but this is important because the application is looking for Chan1, so you, your server must also have a Chan1 uh, under, for a server con. We're going to see that in a second. And then, then third, you're going to have this TCP IP connection, which will is using transport, obviously. That is the transport that the client is using to connect to the server. And then it uses port 1414, which is the default, in fact, for WebSphere MQ. Now, what does that look like? I know that we haven't actually opened up WebSphere MQ Explorer yet, but here it is. And I just want to show you uh, very quickly what this looks like. If I double click on this channel, this is a built-in channel from uh, ICFM, IBM Counter Fraud Management, and take a look. Here is the channel name. They're not using, you know, we just saw, of course, but this is the channel name, the all-important channel name that will be defined in the application. Here it is, and then it has a type, and that type must be compatible, as we said. And you can see other information that's pretty interesting. The queue manager name is CFQM, and the transmission protocol, TCP, and local host, and which port, and, and these sorts of things. We'll cover these later, but the important thing is what we just saw, this, that name must match. And if it does, along with the type, then you'll have proper communication between the two endpoints of the channel.